she wakes to find herself handcuffed to a sexy blonde stranger. Shame that he's blonde. I'm so stressed. Oh my god, I can't. I get this. This is the worst possible thing that could have ever happened. <laughs> well, I also still have all of my Bacopoli books for the two months that I did the Bacopoli TBR for. Hello everybody, welcome to the start of a new weekly reading vlog. So I took a little bit of a break last week, you guys won't be able to tell because of how my videos have been posted, but I did not vlog last week, I just, I wasn't very well at all and I needed a little bit of a break. But I'm back now and I am feeling a little bit better, still working through some stuff, but overall I'm feeling much better. But with me not feeling very well last week, I did not get a whole ton of reading done. I've actually read 180 pages-ish, like slightly less than that across three books and it is currently the 10th of May. So we are slumping a little bit. So I'm just gonna run you through the books that I've started and kind of what I hope to continue on with I guess. I have been participating in the final book support group. It's a two week long round this week if you don't know what that readathon is. It is hosted by Steph from Steph Loves and it's just about reading sequels. There's a bingo board with prompts but you don't have to follow it and I was just focusing on are going to focus on reading sequels. I've lost a week of that readathon now, but I am, I guess, still participating in it. So the books that I've started, the two that I'm not prioritizing right now, one was Misrule by Heather Walter. I am 80-ish, 84 pages into this. I haven't picked this up in at least a week and I just abandoned it halfway through a chapter. Absolutely nothing to do with the book. Definitely my brain was the problem there. I also read about three pages of The Deal by Elle Kennedy. This was because I was sat in the car waiting for Curtis and I didn't have a book with me. So I just read three pages of something that I could read on my phone and this is available on Scribd. So I do hope to continue on with at least this one after I finished the book that I need to prioritize. Maybe the deal as well. We'll see how we go this one instead of it being themed in any way shape or form. I mean I am doing final book support group but it's just going to be me getting back on my feet in terms of reading and actually just reading something instead of making this any type of themed vlog. But the book that I'm currently reading, the book that I need to finish, the one that I'm prioritizing is Fool's Assassin by Robin Hobb. The live show for this is on Sunday, so I really do need to get a move on, especially with how slow I have been reading recently. But this one is, so Final Book Support Group, you can read just generally books in series, like the first book, if you want to, but it is technically about reading sequels. So this is the first book in a series, it's the first book in the Fits and the Fool trilogy, but it is also the 14th book in the realm of the Eldlings overall so I'm just gonna roll with it. And in the realm of the Eldlings we have two kind of locations that the series follows and the first, third and fifth trilogies are about a character called Fitz. Now way back at the beginning in the first book of the realm of the Eldlings, Assassin's Apprentice, Fitz is, I can't remember if he's six or eight years old, but he has been abandoned by his maternal grandfather who wants him to go back to his father. So Fitz finds out that he's the bastard son of the prince in waiting, Prince Chivalry, and when Prince Chivalry finds out that Fitz is on his way to him, he abdicates the throne in shame and moves to the countryside. So Fitz is left in this really awkward position where he is raised a partially by the stable master Burrich, but also when he comes to a certain age, the king starts to take an interest in him and starts training him to become the royal assassin because he's in this like perfect position between being royalty, but he's a bastard. So he's also like one of the common people as well. The main themes of the series, there are two different types of magic. We have the skill, which allows people to communicate with each other across vast distances. And we also have the wit, which allows people to be able to communicate with animals. The skill is something Something that is seen as a good thing, like mainly the royalty have the skill and the wit is an evil magic and people have been killed and persecuted because they have this magic. We also have lots of themes of time and time being circular and breaking out of the same cycles to change the world and like possible outcomes. We also have a lot of prophecy in here. I absolutely adore the realm of the Eldlings as a whole and in this one we are back with Fitz who is now 50 years old. So we followed this poor poor boy his entire life. I'm really enjoying it so far actually. I'm only on chapter five because Robin Hood chapters are quite long. I'm 98 pages in and it is dwelling on or keeps returning to the very sad thing that happened at the end of the last Fitz book which was 
titles. I don't even remember because all of the names just run into one in my brain. But the last book in the Tony Man series, it keeps returning to the end of that and like the kind of bittersweet things that happened there, which is hurting my heart a little bit. But I'm really excited for this because I think the central focus is going to be something that I'm real invested in within this trilogy. I'm also really excited to see how the Rainwild Chronicles and what happened in that series, which that series focuses more on the magic and the history of magic of the world. So I'm excited to see how the events of that series are going to affect this series, which is in a different part of the world. And yeah, I'm after not loving the Rainwild Chronicles too much, I'm really excited to be getting back into this one and i'm enjoying it a lot so that's what we're going to be carrying on with and getting through first i don't know how much i'm going to be reading this week honestly just focusing on getting back on my feet last week was not a good time it was also my birthday so it's sad that it wasn't a good time i did do a couple of escape rooms last week which was a really fun time um i designed a couple of new products that are going to be coming to grace and honey on friday so before you guys see this video but fingers crossed there'll still be some in stock but i am going to be adding a new product range which is going to be mugs and coasters. I can get them for you actually and show them to you guys. So I'm adding two mugs for now. This one is my favourite, very on brand for me. It says if he ain't fae he ain't bae with I love this wreath that I made in Procreate. I am obsessed with it and I think that this one turned out really well. And then the other one still on brand for me. It says I like my men the same way I like my eyeliner winged with a wreath and some big old bat wings on here. And then we also have two matching coasters so the link to my website and the etsy for eu customers is always linked in my description box if you guys would like to check any of those out i'm really happy with how they turned out then what else did i do oh i started a lego set that curtis got me for my birthday and then aside from that i was just generally not having good times but yeah that's a little catch up of where i've been we now know what I'm going to be reading and I'm going to, I'm done with work actually. I was supposed to be off work this week, but because I dicked about so much last week, I've ended up not being able to fully take this week off, which is sad because I wanted to do something cool with the vlog. It's just too much stress and too much pressure for me to handle right now. So we're taking things a little bit easier. I still have a little bit of work to do, unfortunately, but that's just the way it is. But because it was a week that I planned to take off work, it is now nearly 4 p.m. and I'm done for the day. So I'm going to go and read some of my book. Good. <laughs> afternoon i've been working in my kitchen a lot recently i don't know why i just i think because i've been quite unsettled like just generally over the last week i've needed a little bit of a change of scenery and the lighting's really good in the kitchen so i just drag my desk chair in and work on my laptop instead of my desktop as long as i'm not editing because i can't edit on my laptop but anyway that is irrelevant i received a parcel that I want to open for you guys it's addressed to becca and the books which is fun um and it is I would say I'm 99% sure that this is a book. I'm assuming it's a late birthday present, but I'm not sure who from. But we're gonna see. I don't think it was delivered by Amazon either. International bestseller. Oh, oh, it is. Is it Night Pleasures? Yeah, by Sherilyn Kenyon. So I know exactly who this is from. This is from Hannah, who is one of my patrons and reached out and asked me if it was okay if she sent me this book because she thinks I'm really gonna like it. And I think, that maybe was it april has put this in the inner circle patreon jar that i pull from every month so like it is gonna come up at some point i'm just trying to get up hannah's message so i can see what she actually said about it i think i can't remember if it's reverse harem it's hannah's like favorite romance series anyway and i know that hannah has wanted me to read this for a while so it is i believe the first book in the dark hunter series although it says here that fantasy lover is the first oh my god this has a reading order that is very confusing and doesn't actually have this book in it so i'm gonna have to check with hannah or somebody to try and find at the reading order of this because it says that fantasy lover is the first book in the series unless that comes second let me have a look let's oh the beginning of this book says in ancient greek legend which is interesting because i didn't know that that was an element of this series sherry lynn 
Kenyon. Okay, so this says Fantasy Lover is the first book in the Hunter Legends series. Oh no, it's one of, it's an extended universe. This is gonna get confusing. Okay, let's look at this book specifically. This one is the first book in the Dark Hunter series, but the second book in Hunter Legends, whatever that means. But I'm gonna read you guys the synopsis. It says, prepare to enter a world full of richly imagined mythology, a world where dark and dangerous heroes fight to protect us. Prepare to enter an endless battle, prepare to lose yourself. Amanda Devereaux has a unique family. Her mother and older siblings are witches and psychics and her twin sister is a vampire hunter. All Amanda wants is a quiet normal life but when she finds herself the target of an attack meant for her twin she wakes to find herself handcuffed to a sexy blonde stranger. Shame that he's blonde. Kyrian of Thrace is a dark hunter, an immortal warrior who has traded his soul for one moment of vengeance upon his enemies. He spends his eternal days hunting the vampires and demons that prey upon mankind. Or demons, not demons. And he is currently on the hunt for a very old and deadly daemon named, I can't say Damon without thinking about Damon Salvatore. But he's currently on the hunt for a very old and deadly daemon named Desiderus, who has deemed it sport to handcuff Kyrian to a human while he hunts him. Now Kyrian, or Kyrian maybe, and Amanda must find a way to break their bond before they give in to the dangerous attraction to one another, or before Desiderus kills them both. Interesting, I'm really excited to get this. I need to like up my game with my urban fantasy because I keep reading like the first book in a series, case in point, the Fae books by Karen Marie Monin, what is that? Dark Fever is the first book in that series. So I really need to get my shit together. I also have a whole ton of like Nalini Singh and like the Anita Blake books that I need to read. But thank you so much to Hannah for sending this to me. I am gonna look up like a proper reading order for this and dive in at some point in the future. I lay down on the bedroom floor when I can't take it. She just yells and slams the door to test my patience We go back and forth, I grab a glass and break it Darling, when you lose your charm You and I get lost in this on and on and on Where words just serve you wrong and the fights don't finally hit the halfway point in Fools of Assassin. I'm technically one page away, but I'm counting it. I'm on page 300. 14 and I am enjoying this so much. Something that I didn't expect, I believe, that we were told in the live shows for the book club, but there are more perspectives in this book, or at least there is one more perspective that we haven't seen in the realm of the Eldlings before, and that is proving to be very interesting. Also, when people said that there was going to be a different perspective, this character whose perspective we're getting doesn't even come close to being anybody who I even dreamed of suspecting it would be, but it is so interesting, and I have so many theories about what's going to happen in this trilogy, and I'm so excited for the rest of the books in this to come. I mean, I'm only halfway through, and while I am really enjoying it, something that remains true about this and Robin Hobb books in general is that it is supremely slow. She has a very slow descriptive writing style and I've mentioned it before in my videos when I've been reading the Fitz books that being in Fitz's head can be sometimes exhausting because it really does go into like every little minute detail about what he's feeling, what he's thinking. It goes into things about his life that make him a person as opposed to the books like The Life Ship Traders and the Rainwild Chronicles that focus a lot on the history of the magic and some of the more magical elements of the world. So it's a much more personal reading experience, reading from Fitz. And he is addressing some of the concerns that like we've had as readers while we've been reading this, like some of the things that we were worried about going into this trilogy and some of the things that are sad when we're following a character in their later life after following six books already earlier in their life. Cause we followed this character from the age of like six or eight. And throughout the beginning portion of this book, he does age quite a lot as well. It starts where he's I think 47. And at the point where I'm up to now, he 
is I think around 59 like he's in his late 50s so we've had quite a bit of time passing already so he's dwelling on lots of things that have happened in his life that have upset us as readers while we've been experiencing it with him which is adding that little bit of like nostalgia and bittersweetness to it and there's also one particular character that he keeps dwelling on that I keep dwelling on and I'm so excited for what's to come because while so far this book has not been anything that I predicted it could be there's one thing that I know has to happen soon and it has been foreshadowed earlier in the book and I am just waiting for this one thing to happen and I'm so excited for it but somebody did comment in response to the live show announcement for this book that they're excited to see us cry through 80% of this trilogy and I am just not ready I'm not ready just when you this is why I like series as opposed to standalones because when you follow characters for such an extended period of time you become so attached to them that it feels like you know them as people so you don't want bad things to happen to them I don't want to see this character that I've followed since he was a literal child get old like really old and I'm so scared they say hindsight is 2020, but it's hard to imagine how you felt at an earlier point of time when you're experiencing something else in the moment because right now I feel like this could be the most compelling Fitz book that I've read I definitely think that this is the best book following Fitz since the first trilogy and probably one of the best hob books so far since the live ship traders so the last two trilogies I think have been the weakest for me but I'm now so excited for this like my interest has been re-peaked and I am reinvested I guess in this story so yeah I'm at the halfway point I'm running out of time it's Friday night the Buffy watch along is tonight we only have five more sessions left but only like two weeks and tonight left of the Buffy watch along we're in the final season of Angel and we're actually tonight we're going to be watching one of my favorite episodes of Angel ever which is the 100th episode I mean if you know you know I'm excited to see everybody's reactions because even though there were quite a few people in the Buffy watch along who had watched Buffy before there's not many who'd actually watched Angel before because like to be fair Buffy is miles better than Angel. Angel has a lot of low points, especially in comparison to the small amount of high points it has. But I really like season five and the second half of the season as well. A whole ton of interesting things happen. So I'm excited to see everybody's reactions to that. I'm also trying to emotionally prepare myself a little bit for that. But yeah, I'm hoping to, in the breaks in between episodes, get a little bit more reading done. And I'm going to be doing Patreon reading sprints tomorrow for the majority of the day because Curtis is going to, I think it's a Yu-Gi-Oh tournament. He often goes to play Yu-Gi-Oh on Saturdays. He hasn't been in a while though, but I know that tomorrow he's going to be out of the house all day. So I'm going to spend my time in reading sprints with my patrons to try and get through as much of this book as possible because I hate having to finish a book for a live show on the day of the live show because I feel the pressure and that slows my pace even further. So yeah, those are my plans. Wish me luck. I don't want to cry by the end of this book. I don't want to cry watching episode 100 of Angel either, but that's probably definitely going to happen. And yeah, I'm looking forward to a productive reading week. But you deserve some affirmation from a person who is less fucked up than me. Officially eight and a half hours until the Fools Assassin live show and I have 132 pages left. So wish me luck because it's going to be slow going but we have to get this done. I just hit page 560 in this and I have never been more stressed in my entire life. If this ends like this with me feeling immensely stressed at this thing that's just happened, I don't know if I can continue and read the rest of the books in this series. I'm so stressed. Oh my god, I can't. I get this, this is the worst possible thing that could have ever happened. It is 7.30 now, so the live show for Fools Assassin is in 30 minutes. And I can confirm that I did finish it just before dinner. So, I mean, we nearly brought it all the way down to the wire, but I did it. It was intense. I was just lulled into a false sense of security for the majority of this book. So like there was obviously points of it that weren't great, but I didn't think anything super dramatic was going to happen. But oh boy, did it. And oh boy, was I scared. This is my favorite Fitz book 
that I've ever read. Possibly this series, if it carries on the way that it does, could top the live ship traders for me in like my ranking of my favorite series in the realm of the Adlings. But I just loved this so much and it was slow like all Robin Hood books are, but without really feeling slow throughout the plot. And I don't know whether I have just gotten used to Robin Hood's writing style, but I just, it reminded me of the first trilogy in ways that I can't really disclose because spoilers, I can't really talk about a great deal of this without giving spoilers because while it is the first book in a trilogy it's the 14th book in a story kind of like overall but yeah this pulled at my heartstrings as it always does there were some big shocking moments that i did not expect and the way that this book leaves off is actually criminal and i'm cannot wait until we start the next book in the series i mean i can because emotional damage is not something that i actively seek which is a lie because i do like my tragic like love stories in terms of movies and stuff so sometimes i do like to poke at that wound a little bit <laughs> and seek out emotional damage for myself but I'm, I'm glad that i don't have to read the sequel next month but i am also really eager to get back into the world and find out what happens next content warnings in here for grief across like a whole range and spectrum of emotion i guess and also animal abuse in here as well there is also mention of like torture and stuff like that which i feel is pretty typical with adult epic fantasy but it is in there if that is something that you're not not too fond of so yeah this is my first book of me read i actually managed to read a book can we believe it and a big thank you of course to ashlog for gifting this book to me i'm really excited to discuss this book with everybody in the live show because i want to know everybody else's thoughts i think the overwhelming like consensus is that everybody enjoyed it but um i have some theories that i'd like to discuss so i was gonna wrap this vlog up somewhere around here like today but i've decided that we're going to continue for a couple of days but now we have a problem because i know that i'm not going to get to all of the books on my tbr therefore i don't know which ones i should bother prioritizing so i have no idea what i want to pick up right now part of me wants to read some romance because like i get through it a lot faster but then part of me also wants to carry on with fantasy and read some more adult fantasy so i'm not sure right now i feel like a strong contender one that i have pulled out kings of the wild by nicholas ames which is my patreon pick actually for april so i am delayed in reading it and this one was claire's pick so i do really want to get to this i've also heard great things about this but i also still have all of my bookopoly books for the two months that i did the bookopoly tbr for so i feel like aurora's end is a strong contender i just would like to finish whatever book i pick before the end of this vlog and because i've been so slumpy i can't guarantee i'm going to be able to do that if i pick something so large so yeah i'm not actually sure what it is that i want to pick up yet but as soon as i make a commitment to something i mean i could also continue on with misrule which i have already started but yeah when i make a commitment to something and actually decide to start a book i'll let you guys know what that is summer rain on the window Watch the time float on Cool air blows a memento As I fall behind I'm so sorry So the book that I did indeed decide to commit to is Kings of the Wild by Nicholas Ames. And I'm 160 pages into it now, which I mean, it feels like a decent chunk. It's probably like a third of the book. But at the same time, I feel like I've spent a lot of time reading and haven't been making much progress in like that regard. But I'm enjoying this one so far. It is a little bit more fast paced than the books that I typically enjoy. So I'm struggling with retaining all of the information that I need to just because of that fast pacing but I am really enjoying it. So this one is following a group of mercenaries who back in the day, like 20 years ago, were rich, they were famous, they were known for like killing all of the monsters. There's a whole bunch of historical battles and events that they were present at and people practically worship them for this. However, they're now in retirement. It's been 20 years, you know, they're a little bit older. They're in their 40s, 50s now. And they've put all of that behind them and are dedicated in the most part to their families. So one day, one of the band members, Gabriel, turns up on clay 
Clay's doorstep, who is like the character that we're viewing the story through. And Gabriel turns up on Clay's doorstep and pretty much begs him to come with him to rescue Gabriel's daughter, who has grown up seeing her father and knowing his legacy and decided that she wants a slice of that pie for herself. So she's joined up with a mercenary band and has ended up going to save the city, which is currently being besieged by like hundreds of thousands of monsters. So Clay reluctantly agrees to go with Gabe and together they travel to the homes of the rest of the members of their band and try and convince them to join them so they can eventually go and save Gabe's daughter, Rose. It is very comedic. It has a kind of tone that I don't typically enjoy where there's a lot of levity in it. I am enjoying the humour in here, but it's very much like a kind of whimsical D&D &D style quest through the forest, like skipping between each event with very little in between that. That being said, like normally I would say that a story that is structured like that is more plot driven. I do feel like this is an equal mix of character and plot and the thing that's keeping me hooked in this book is the characters and the relationships between them because we have very different dynamics within this group like they're all in very different positions than they were when they were a mercenary band so we have the kind of juxtaposition of like who they were versus who they are now and also things have gone down you know like some of them have still remained in contact over these 20 years and some of them may have had fall-ins out and they don't get on like they did a long time ago like things have happened so to get the band back together they kind of have to like put all of that aside they also have to kind of acknowledge the fact that they're not the people they were they're a lot older now they can't do what they used to be able to do or try and like pull it together to save Gabe's daughter but they're doing it in a way where they're kind of resigned like they know that Rose is in a pretty dire situation so they're not even convinced that they're going to be able to help her but um for the sake of Gabe and for the sake of like the brotherhood that they once shared they're willing to get the band back together one more time and go out on this heroic quest. So I'm having like a real good time with it. The only thing that is like putting me off a little bit is the pacing but it is it's, it's, it's a fun story right now with quite a lot in the terms of the world like the world is decently developed and also expansive and we also have these grizzled old characters that I can really get behind because I love I don't know what it is but I love the trope of warriors who have to come out of retirement or exile for like one last battle you know like there's characters like that in Red Rising like one of the I can't remember his name but there's a character in Red Rising who I think plays this his biggest role in the second book who was like an old war hero. I also like the legendary warrior that we really never get to see like Rhaegar Targaryen in Game of Thrones and having these characters that are more than their legend but we hear about them through their legend. So I'm really enjoying those dynamics in here which is the whole reason why I have this book anyway. Cody gifted this to me a couple of years ago because she knows that I really love those elements. And so far this one is delivering on all of those fronts. So um, yeah, I'm having a good time with it. I'm so sorry for dreaming about the future. pretty much just coming from the garden so I'm looking like a hot mess but I'm pretty much just here to wrap up this vlog so my original plan was to wrap it up tomorrow morning but I've now been recruited to help Curtis's mum pack up her house because she's actually moving next week so I won't have time tomorrow to finish up this vlog get all of the editing done and get everything like proofed and ready for you guys to actually see this vlog tomorrow so we're wrapping it up here i'm 180 190 ish pages into kings of the wild so i'm just like a little bit under halfway and i am still enjoying it it is a little bit of a weird time in terms of vlogs right now because the next vlog that i'm going to be starting is actually going to be the 48 hour bookoplathon vlog so for the next three days i'm not going to be vlogging at all so if i finish kings of the wild in this time you're not going to see my thoughts in a vlog but it will of course be included in my may wrap up regardless so you'll get to know everything 
that you need to know about my thoughts in that video if it doesn't make it into a vlog but if I don't finish it before the bookathon starts then it will be in the vlog that I start on like Monday next week anyway. So yeah the 48 hour bookathon is coming up and if you guys don't know what that is and you want to check it out I will put the announcement video up here. If you don't have any plans this weekend and you want to get some reading done I would recommend that you join us. I do intend to get quite a bit of reading done. I'm quite excited. I do feel very differently about it this time though than I did last time. Last time I was like super nervous but also super excited and stressed about getting everything ready. Right now it starts in like two days and I'm really chill so I feel like something must be wrong if I'm this relaxed like I must be forgetting something but I don't know everything seems good so far but yeah that's pretty much all I have to cover right here right now so I do hope you've enjoyed this vlog if you made it this far if you have please don't forget to like if you liked it and subscribe if you wanna and I'll see you guys next week bye oh you bite your friend like chocolate you say you will go where nobody knows with guns in under our petticoats we're never gonna quit it, no, we're never gonna quit it, no